Hey guys, in this video we do a quick summary of AQA chemistry energy changes. If you want a checklist, make sure you've covered everything, get that in the free origin guide which is over my website, or you can get that from Amazon. An endothermic reaction feels like it gets colder, whereas an exothermic reaction you can feel it gets hotter. Another way of saying gets colder would be to take heat in, and another way to say get hotter would be to give heat out. Now we can make these slightly more sophisticated by replacing the word heat with the word energy. So now a sophisticated answer is that an endothermic reaction takes energy in and an exothermic reaction gives energy out. During an endothermic reaction, energy is going to get taken in, so we have our reactants down here. Energy gets taken in, so our products are up here. So we can say that the energy of the products is higher than the energy reactants. During an exothermic reaction, energy reaction is given out, so our reactants. Energy is given out, so our products are going to be down here, which means our products have lower energy than the reactants. For example, an endothermic reaction would be electrolysis. An exothermic reaction would be burning or neutralization. You need to be able to calculate the energy change when a reaction takes place, remembering that bond's energy breaking takes energy in and bond making gives energy out. So burning hydrogen in oxygen will give out water, calculate the energy change for this reaction. The first thing we need to do is write the balanced equation. Hydrogen plus oxygen gives water. We need to put a 2 there to balance out the oxygens and two there to balance out the hydrogens. Draw everything we have. So we have hydrogen and we have two of them, so I'm going to draw that twice. Plus oxygen turns into water. And while the examiner would probably expect you to be able to work out the formulas, balance the equation and draw them by yourself, they would not expect you to recall the bond zone. The bond energies will be given to you in the exam. Next we're going to list the type of bonds that we have and the number. So we have hydrogen, hydrogen bonds and we have one, two of those. We have an oxygen, oxygen double bond and we just have one bo double bond in there. We have oxygen hydrogen bonds and we have one two three four of those and now we need to take that and multiply it by the bonds energies so two bonds for hydrogen that is two times four three six one times four nine eight four times four six four we can do the maths and work out how much is on each side, adding those up. 872 plus 498 gives us 1370. Um, there's just 1856 on that side. Now we need to do the energy of the reactants minus the energy of the product. So 1370 minus 1856 giving us minus 486 kilojoules per mole. In this type of equation, if you got the symbol wrong, you'd probably only lose one mark. It having a negative sign in front of it tells us it is exothermic. 
So any reaction that is burning, you can check yourself because it should always be exothermic. We can pretty much guarantee that a big calculation is going to come up on this paper, so it is worth practicing these really well. To help you, I've written a book. Here we have a simple cell with two different metals, copper and zinc, in their own solution. So here is zinc in zinc sulfate solution and copper in copper sulfate solution. They are connected by a salt bridge or an iron bridge and because zinc is higher in the electrochemical series it is going to push electrons this way towards copper. A flow of electrons means we are going to have a potential difference. So the zinc is going to be giving up electrons and the copper is going to be accepting electrons. That thing that we commonly refer to as a battery is actually a cell. I know, I know, it's really annoying. A cell is one battery. A battery is more than one cell. So this is a cell. And then two or more of them together would be a battery. In non-rechargeable batteries, the chemical reaction that produces electricity, once that is used up, the battery is dead. Whereas in a rechargeable battery, there is a reversible reaction that goes on. So once the reactants are used up, you can pass electricity through it, which will cause the reaction to go in the opposite direction, recharging the battery. In a hydrogen fuel cell, we just have hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas and turning into water. There is a large amount of energy released. Which can be used to power an electric car. And water is the only product. Which means there are no carbon emissions. There are a few problems with this, uh, predominantly with the production of hydrogen. At the moment this uses fossil fuels because hydrogen can either be made more acting steam with coal or natural gas, which are both fossil fuels. Or hydrogen is made by electrolysis of water, but that involves electricity, electricity which is generated using fossil fuels. The other problems are it's quite hard to find. The hydrogen needs to be compressed. Which is a problem because it will be explosive. It also needs a very, very large tank to store it in. And they don't work at low temperatures. At the negative electrode, we are going to have hydrogen gas minus two electrons turning into hydrogen ions. At the positive electrode, we are going to have these hydrogen ions reacting with the oxygen gas and some electrons, and they are then going to turn into the water.